welcome to Birch and Birch. This is a podcast where we're not going to tell you what this is a podcast slash live video for. <laughs> Nobody cares anyway. I told that I said that we should explain what we are now doing because we used to do real estate on this podcast and live video. And then we realized no one cared about the real estate aspect. And so I wanted to explain what it is now. And uh, dad said, uh, no, no one cares. He went, Nobody, full, nobody's going to care. He went full Don Draper on me, which by the way, is one of our topics this morning, afternoon. Oh God, I'm so tired. Uh, Don, I call dad Don Draper often because he's, Dashing. Creative. <laughs> no, we could sure, but also, <laughs> uh -huh. um, but also because he, you creatively see things on like such a wide, on such a high level scale, you kind of swoop in and you're like, oh yeah, 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 I see this. This is how it should go. Like you have a very creative brain. You're a good writer. You know all that stuff. So I then I, then I get my glass of bourbon, take a sip, and. Lay on my couch. <laughs> he goes, I was explaining why I call him Don Draper earlier. And he goes, he goes, okay, well, let me put on my Don Draper hat when we were fighting about what to say to explain this podcast. And he goes, he goes, all right, I'll put on my Don, I'll, let me be my Don Draper. He took an imaginary cup and he went, no one cares. <laughs> 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 and then it fell over. It was so good. <laughs> Well, yeah. that's what he he was like you know i think i don't know if all guys would look at that but they'd be like he's got it made he, he like, works like 30 minutes a day he's, he's a grunt doesn't whiskey. say much exactly sleeps <laughs> on his couch and then sets up and makes some no yeah. the customer only wants this and then that's the end of it it's like really that's it yeah i've got one minute to chase now he's like i have one sentence it's it's brilliant and that's all and you were you were doing good when you slurred your word there for a minute i was Although he didn't do that in the he didn't TV. swear. No, he was drunk all the time, but he was fine. <sighs> okay. Love that show. Uh yeah, me too. I want to watch it through again. But it's life as an older white guy. Is what that show is? I kinda. You know what it was, was a, a bad lot of old, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of older white guys in that thing. Being an older white guy at that time is very different than being an older white guy at this time. That's right. That's better. In that uh, Other than it's not better, I take I take I think, that back. It's yeah. not fun being an older white guy anymore. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I think that the people that were creeped out by older men before had no platform from which to say, "Hey, man, don't do that." Yeah, that's true. No question. I just know from my perspective that I can seriously feel that skepticism, in, especially younger women. Yes. Like if you're like, if I'm on, you were trying to do what we can to build our social media presence, which usually yes. is you like someone or you comment on their stuff. Yes. And wait, wait, before you say what you're going to say, I want to preface it so that you don't come off as, hold on. I just want to say one sentence, which is, I have not thought about, I, I being a younger female, uh, had not thought about being an older white man as anything but advantageous because that's like, what well, we are, you know, in college and like looking at the world, everything you read, everything you hear, everything. Well, and you statistically see. speaking, yeah. it's pretty, pretty baller to be uh, an to older be white male. There are a lot of just there are a lot of of cultural benefits, and people are really impressed by that. But um, I had not thought of because because you're at the top of the status with uh, what you guys have gotten. <laughs> It's really easy to punch up uh, and punching up is acceptable. Like making fun of the people in power is, you know, what you're supposed to do, what comedians do, whatever. So now we're in that that phase where that's what you do. You just make a villain out of uh, any older white male. And I hadn't thought about that as a gross generalization until you started talking about it. And OK, I just wanted to preface what you were going to say so that people weren't like, wow, he's really out of touch. <laughs> oh, no, I think that. I think everything you said is correct. I would argue that I think that curve is already changing and that while right now the sensibilities are 
to have like a reverse discrimination or a, a prejudice the other way now swing that pendulum back the other way because white men have had so much privilege for so long that that's the focus that they do but as an older white male mm -hmm. i'm i feel that i don't have that anymore and i'm not complaining about it per se but I, the things that I'm noticing, which I get are probably natural in the way it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. is that it's hard for me to engage with someone younger, especially hard for me to engage with somebody younger that's female. And yeah. it's because of that price. So that's tempering. And now I have, um, I have. And you don't, you, you keep yourself from doing that. Right. Uh, like, yeah. And not in a creepy way in a like, just you like uh, yeah yeah, yeah. We're trying to do what we're doing in regular business but even um let's see how can like I we, we dm in trouble we dm a lot of i'll help you i promise i'm on your team uh that because we dm a lot of other agents and a lot of potential buyers and all of that so when i do it i have no barrier there's no one that if i dm they are like you're a predator you're coming after me except from a salesy perspective, maybe they're like, excuse yeah. me, yeah. Hey, please leave me alone. But they're not like, oh, I, uh, I'm scared of you. Right. Whereas you can come across as a predator. So when I'm, I have a list of a hundred people, I can DM all of them and be fine. You look at the, the younger females and you're like, I'm just going to skip those because I don't want to be perceived as that guy. Right. And I do do that. I skip, I skip quite a few and I don't, I don't do that. And I think about it, that there are other very successful real estate agents that I, I would just like to be like distantly connected to yeah. Typical social media reason you connect. And I'm like, no, no, uh, no, I just don't, I don't want to do that. And then on an, uh, on a different tangent, I have a, an entrepreneurial neighbor who's a younger male and of some color i know i don't really don't think about him that way but he's made he's pointed that out to me that he's of color if that's what, how you want to say it um oh i and, know you're talking about okay i was like what the and heck? he uses owg old white guy we have to have a old white guy and um he talks about that and i've run into other people they're like yeah you have to have a token old white guy they don't they don't provide any value they're not tech they're not technically savvy but for the bank or someone to, uh, for us to get in, we got to have an old white guy connected to us, even and if it's worthless. That's, and it's true. I mean, it seems true. It does seem true, which speaks to the guy, the fact that, you know, the, the perception of being an older male, right. but at the same time I can see, I can usually play that movie forward. And what that means right. is that you're a burden and you're a pain in the ass and people don't appreciate you. They don't really want you around and they don't see that you had much value and they don't like the prejudice and they don't like the fact that an old white guy has to be a part of it. So but that's interesting because that sounds like, um, what it must feel like to be a diversity hire. Yeah, I think so. When I think so. If you're, if you're, it's like if a you know, if you've been hired hire. because you're any, anything other than one, you know, as, an older way than, well no if you feel like you've been hired because of anything other than your contribution yeah yeah your yeah. skill set i'm with you so, so anyway, it's, it's, so I, it's I think what's, it's profiling. interesting to me because i feel like yes but i feel like uh older white men are starting to experience what other race a taste only a taste of what other races and oh no question have experienced throughout all of history no i'm question. reading the autobiography of malcolm x right now oh wow yeah i can't fathom what it would be like to be and and i'm not the only thing i'm saying is i recognize it yeah it does change the way i behave but in no way do i feel like i'm disadvantaged really you know yeah. it, it, it would be like well, it's like when you were lined up on the playground to be picked for a sport and you were picked number two or number three, <laughs> you know, so what, who cares? Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I do see that it's changing and I do love the fact that there's, um, I do love youth and I do love diversity. Um, and I, and I recognize that I have to be careful not to profile, but I also recognize profiling. And, and for me in that political spectrum, 
I, even though nature tells you that when the pendulum starts to swing across, it's not going to stop at the bottom at a nice balanced spot. It's going to swing the other way. Uh -huh. I can't help but want it to stop at the bottom so that the people that are going to get hurt on the reverse way don't have to suffer. It would just be nice if they, and there are some wonderful leaders that witness that, but still. Like who? What it's worth. I don't know. Think about Martin Luther King Jr. or Gandhi Nelson, or Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela. The, you know, the, the ones that were like, I, we want to get on with life. We don't want to waste our future on revenge. We want to move on. Um, but you know, yeah, the, but the pendulum swings. So human nature takes its course. I'm glad that it's moving the way it is. I'm super glad that things are um, really, you know, like you have the opportunity that you have and, and everybody does, you know, your mom, we're just, uh, maybe we're not the typical older white couple. No, but, but, we're, <laughs> but we're both exposed to a lot of different things and a lot of different cultures and a lot of different colors. And I don't think either your mom or I really think that much in color or care you know, or gender. Yeah, I do think that's true uh, to a degree. The not thinking in color thing is not really a um, thing. Uh, it, that's been an interesting change. I think when I was living in Iowa, that was my goal. That was my aspiration. Um, mm -hmm. But then I went to college and met a lot of other people. And I was like, and and essentially the what I've learned through that was, oh, um, <laughs> actually, we can't help but see it. So so recognizing that is more valuable and more helpful. If it's, yeah, if it's proactive or appreciative or something like that. I can't think of the word, but. Positive, just positive. Positive, yeah. <laughs> just positive. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel, I I read a lot, but that's not like the same as experiencing it. So I, uh it's a tricky top. It's a terrific tricky it topic. Is. And the more I learn about it, our, the history and racial inequality in our country today, and like just systemically how hard it is to break free from that, I'm just right. like, oh crap! I I don't. I, what do you even I've do? Been, I've been shocked um, the last four years. Oh I'd yeah, absolutely. I'd absolutely shocked because if somebody had asked me do you think there's a lot of racial prejudice left in the country i would have said ah, i don't think so i don't see it oh um, really but it was because i don't see it i'm not i'm not attached to it and You're but then yeah. yeah but now it's it's like really this group is doing this this group is saying this this is being handled this way man was i wrong hugely wrong yeah. And, and frankly, insensitive because, you know, yeah. No, the, that was great. Well, I, this is a whole other topic. Yeah, this was not where we were headed. Yeah. <laughs> this was not yeah. part of the, our goal was yeah. not to talk about race today. But it, you know, neither of us have any authority to do that. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. So moving along. Um, but there is a. Yeah, we were going to talk about dating. And now I'm like, we can't talk about dating in the same episode. We talk about this. Oh, my God. Well, what you know, we there's as a segue, though. You, you People people by nature no matter this is across class across gender across color nationality people yeah. profile and when you date you profile and just like when i'm deciding eh, i'm not going to friend them you tell me as a young female single uh -huh. young single female who's dating sometimes well not really, yeah not at the moment <laughs> but it does it's not really a good idea for me, but do yeah. you or do you not profile? I'm sure I must to some degree, right? Because we can't. I mean, I can't not. To, but I think it would be ignorant for me to be like I don't make any generalizations. I try really hard not to, and I think that might actually be part of my problem because I feel like I need to know somebody. So every time when I, I'm on an app, I swipe to the I swipe right or like accept a lot of people because I'm like, well, I don't really care what you look like. I care if we connect when we talk and I can't know how we connect when we talk unless we talk. So it gets overwhelming, but I'm sure that I profile to some degree because we all have to, we like make generalizations and assumptions. Well, I would assume you'd be out on a date every night if you didn't profile to some degree. 
I would, I think that's why I don't date at all though. I like go on. I go, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know. I don't know. I can't, <laughs> I can't handle it. <laughs> it's not good. That. And also when I do get into a dating relationship, it is too much. Not pleasant from my perspective. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> From your perspective, what happens when Morgan gets a pseudo boyfriend? You're grumpy. I'm grumpy? Yeah, you are grumpy. Grumpy and dismissive. I'm dismissive too? Oh, God, I'm even worse than I thought I was. <laughs> oh, let me go on. <laughs> <laughs> I already, this is why, yeah, it's not good. No, you get pretty, fo I mean, you you live a pretty high speed lifestyle. And there's not a lot of room in it. So you sort your bucket of priorities and business is a priority. And then that person you're dating is a priority. But then as you're, as a business partner, you're kind of like, you know, you should really be able to take care of yourself. <laughs> I got things I got to think about. I'm not a supportive partner. Yeah. Yeah. I would, yeah, I just get that's really, probably get more really into it and I dedicate, it's like my number one thing. It has been historically my number one thing and I don't want to mm -hmm. do that anymore. I want to have a more balanced perspective. And if I do date somebody, I just don't trust myself right now. So I'm like really nervous to date. You know, I think, longer. I think I could pick the perfect guy for you. Do you really? Yeah, I'll I'll describe him. You want to hear my description of the perfect guy? Yeah. I see you with a really smart blue collar guy that is not the least bit interested in social media, but loves to read and is well educated or doesn't. I'm not. I don't mean like has to go through a certain amount of college. Like but curious, educated, yeah, just yourself. just curious. But at the same time, he's. He's up, he's in his car at seven or eight o'clock in the morning. He's going to work. He grinds out his eight, nine, 10 hours a day. He comes back uh -huh. home. And when you go off on your very bright, well-educated rants about your perspectives on life, he's like, sometimes he'll be like, yeah, he'll get really engaged in the conversation. He's other is like, I'm, I don't care. What's for dinner? What are we going to cook? <laughs> are we going to go eat? <laughs> huh? I don't know. I don't have any opinions or theories. I think uh, you'd, I think you'd like that because then he'd be out of your way during the time he's working. Huh. He's less like working, you know. He's working, you're working, everything's good. You come home. Sometimes okay, you're both on the same page. Sometimes you're not, but you're both okay with it when you're not. I could I could see that working. That I mean, who knows, man? Maybe I or might maybe an older guy, not my age, of course, but but an older guy that's like so confident in himself that he can. Like shrug you off because you you are a strong personality. What? No, <laughs> I'm demure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody that watches this, they get to see the fun, bubbly, smiley Morgan, not the intense. Don't mess with me because I am smarter than you and I can't outwork you. They, I, they don't see that part. My little my little dragon lady Anna Wintour thing that. You're you're a lot winter and a winter like when you're focused. I no one who sees this will believe you, and I relish that. Yeah. <laughs> Until they see it, then they'll be like, "Shit." <laughs> <laughs> well, I try not to do. I try not to do it. I just get into the you know thing, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, I, okay, so back to dating. Uh -huh. How's that going? I'm not doing it, uh, but I will say that I have learned some things from my past. And the number one thing that I am looking for in a partner is, uh, or what, what I think is most valuable, is somebody who under who values relationships a lot and believes that they require work the same way everything in life requires work, and they require attention, like. Some people think that if it's a great relationship, it should just be easy. And it's not that it's supposed to be hard. It's just that every relationship, my my friendship with you, my friendship with mom, my friendship with mm -hmm. all my best friends, like they all take effort and attention and a deliberate thought of, I want to be better at this. I want to show them more love. How can I be a better partner? And I think that question to myself often about all my relationships um, not romantic and romantic. And if I date somebody who doesn't understand that and doesn't value that, then it's this one-sided thing where they think, oh, you're just like that. You're just naturally a giving person. And I'm like, 
How good for me because I don't have to give anything and I'll just take it all while our you personalities it. match really well. And I'm like, <laughs> it's because I'm giving and you're taking, and uh I am dying inside. <laughs> yeah. Uh and guys I, are bad about guys are so simple. Um you say yeah. that a lot. I do but. say that, but now as you're nearing your next decade of life, yes, do you, do you agree or disagree? 30, you have 30. you have a few few men that you've dated or boys depends. I have do, my opinion on some. Do I think you have your opinion <laughs> on all a, of them? Might be a couple. Pretty might be a sure couple all of them are boys in your opinion, but that, that's not surprising. You're my father. Maybe. Um, I do. I think they're simple. Do I think men are simple? I think they are simpler than women. I think in general, men tend, mo tend there there are more men who are able to uh, not think about anything and kind of detach, even men who have anxiety problems. Like they, there's some part of the brain where they can just be like, and it's genuinely blank in there. Um, whereas I feel like <laughs> I women- think All men have a space in their head. It's blank in there. And I think some women probably have it too. Uh, but I do, I think uh, more women naturally tend to just do overthinking and analyzing and it makes us feel smart. But, uh, and sometimes I think it is helpful and other times I think it's very hurtful because we're adding a bunch of untrue things and interpretations too. We should talk about that someday. Kind of the, we stoic, the stoic perception and not, not adding to things. Yes, I'm excited we'll to talk about that. Someday. Yeah, it's on our list of things to chat about. But so, okay, that did not get very juicy. You know, I really thought we were going to talk about dating. You were going to expose me, but maybe you don't know enough to do I that. I could. I don't know. I don't want. Um, I feel bad because I don't want to out the guys that you've. Oh, that's dated. a good point. But I think they all don't like me, so, so there's no way they're watching this. I don't know that that's true. You, but when you're done, when you're done with somebody, they know you're done with them. Okay. Okay. Would you disagree with that? Um. No. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I, sure they've all seen that that Anna Wintour thing when it's like, yeah, you're fired. I don't think they all have. I don't actually think that's true. I think it comes out of nowhere, and suddenly I'm like this cold, detached person who's walking away, and then. And that's not cool. I don't like that. I don't want, want to be that. I want to. I would. I would say that um, even though maybe the guys you've dated deserved a little bit of that or deserve something, they um, didn't. I don't. Well, maybe not. Whatever. I, mean, I don't. I'm not heartless. I don't like. Even even though they might have been a little self consumed and all about them, let's put it that way, or a lot about themselves, um, you your switch goes off pretty quickly, and you're done. And I don't. Yes, I think that they're probably surprised. They're like, because you know, I'm putting a week lot of everything was awesome, and <laughs> now how is it that everything's not awesome anymore? I don't understand it either. Though is the problem, and 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 it would make me very insecure to date somebody like me because knowing that, you know, they're somebody who's like putting in a lot of work, always paying attention, always there, wants to know everything, super supportive really warm, like all of that. That is how mm -hmm. I am. And then suddenly I realize, oh, this is a really bad fit. And then I'm out and you're, they're like, you didn't even give me a chance. And I was like, no, I did. I, I just realized. I just didn't ask. I look, I look back, I looked back on, on the whole time and realized, oh, this is the consistent pattern of behavior. I don't, I don't want to change you. I want you to be you. So you go be you. I just don't think that we should be a we. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm always the one who's rejected. This makes me sound like I'm I'm, I'm just breaking hearts left and right. <laughs> but that's not true. That's not true. I've been rejected also this year. <laughs> this year. I was, but it was good though that I was rejected because I got some space and I was like, whoa, that would have been bad. That would have been real bad. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Anyway, I do think that that some guys, some men can shift. And when you talk about men being trained and people just think that's a joke or that's it is kind of true because guys are simple. And I think in some cases, if you're like, hey, I, you know, I don't know if this is working out. I'm feeling like this. 
I think the light might go on and they go, yeah, you're right. I should be a little more like that. I hadn't even thought about it. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe you can't change people. I feel like I'm a different guy. So I think, no, I, I agree. I, I think we all are constantly I, training I each hope, other. There's hope for people. I think we are all constantly tra training each other. We're, we're always taking an input of this is, you know, when I give this person a compliment like this, they really like that. Oh, that's great. That makes me feel good. That's the kind of thing mm -hmm. we'll talk about. You know, I think we're always doing that. Mm -hmm. I think that here's what I think the root of my problem is. Okay. I think, your problem. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. 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 I think that I have dated people only on chemistry. So I am. Welcome. Welcome to, <laughs> I'm sure none of our listeners have ever done that. Yeah. So I think that what happens is that I, uh, it's very rare for me to have chemistry with somebody that lasts longer than a conversation. Like I love strangers. So everyone I meet, mm -hmm. I'm like, Wah! but then after I actually know you, I'm like, okay, the chemistry there is now just a friend's friends. And when it lasts longer than one conversation, I'm like, I got to ride this wave. I got to ride it. <laughs> I got to surf this baby. Um, and I, because that's the only reason, then when the chemistry starts to fade and the actual personality and treatment comes out, I'm like, oh, that chemistry was just based on, almost always just based on this person being somebody who doesn't really like people and is really hard to win over. And I was just trying, it, I was on a high of winning them over. So you like the hard catches? I Historically, yes. But now I think... I've done a lot of self work and hopefully I don't do that ever again. Well, so there you know, we worked that out. Yeah. I what don't are know. we going to do next? Uh, I don't know. That's why I'm just avoiding, I'm avoiding it generally. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I've loved working with you the last few weeks. Weeks. Months. months. Has it been months? Yeah. Months. It goes by so fast. <laughs> Because that's how much fun I am. <laughs> <laughs> we have been doing it really well. That's part of the thing. I mean, we're on a good groove. We're having Things so happening. we're working hard. We have a solid vision. I mean, this is my focus. This is your this focus. Is growing. COVID was not the easiest season to get through. It's no, but it not did trying to make light it. of that. It allowed us to cocoon a little bit more. And in our cocoon, we were like, let's get hustling, building ourselves a butterfly. And um, we really set up some amazing systems that we're following and, you know, all that stuff. So Got our first team member coming on. Yeah. I love her. Second. Second. Forgot about Marco. I love Marco. her so much. <laughs> Mark, is, Mark is in the Queens and we don't ever see him. So it's like, you know, he's not right here. In our <laughs> we see place. our new team member all the time and she's amazing. And I love her a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited. I just love, I mean, life is good. And so when I have those pangs of wanting a partner, I stop and I'm like, what would this actually look like? Because I have some super great relationships in my life that are friendships that I some pretty incredible friends. I have incredible friendships that I've dedicated a lot of time and energy to. And two of those friends are you and mom genuinely. And, uh, and I think about it and I'm like, you know, I might just be pining for this kind of fantasy that isn't real. And if I actually had it in my life would kind of overtake my life and be unhealthy for me. So I'm, I'm rocking the Diane Keaton version of life. How's that mean? How do you mean? Explain she was, that. She was single to she, she, she still is single. She's like dated every once in a while. She never got married and she had kids in her fifties and she didn't birth the kids. She's adopted the kids and gave them amazing names. One of them is Duke and the other one is Dexter. And uh, she is just fun and, and great and individual. And I'm like, yeah, that or Linda Rodin, also a big fan of her. She's a single woman who's in her sixties. She's always been single. So we'll see. Yeah. Time will tell. Time will tell. I'm not hating the idea completely. I'm just saying I don't trust myself. Well, it's for everybody out there. If you know somebody that you think would be the perfect match for Morgan. Don't send them. <laughs> let, let me know. I'll vet them for you. I'm single and not ready to mingle. <laughs> yeah, send them to dad. If you approve them, then okay. <laughs> Actually, a couple of your boyfriends I kind of like. Oh, that's cool. 
they're still my priority. So as soon as I get the feeling that they're not treating you the way I think they ah. be treated, then that's always, but I mean, just if we are just drinking a beer or smoking a cigar or oh, oh, yeah, yeah. hanging out. Me too. I drink a beer, smoke a cigar with them. Yeah. They uh, wouldn't do that with me, but <laughs> you might be surprised. I don't know. May the bridges I burn light my way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that uh, a recall? I've never heard that before, but that is awesome. <laughs> no, it's not. I saw it, I think, on Pinterest or something, and I was like, I will never forget that. <laughs> May the bridges I burn light, light my way. <laughs> okay, uh, let's hop on. Want to wrap it up? Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for um, hanging out with us as our, our little What the Friday podcast blog thing continues to morph. Yes. And... Um, Love it. So if you if you want to like subscribe, depends Follow. on where you're and leave it. a it's comment if you, have, if you actually watch this and listen to this. Leave a comment or send us a DM because uh, we would like that very much. Yeah, it'd be fun. And then maybe give us more to talk about. Although I don't, I don't get to see any comments as we're talking. I, I know we're on multiple platforms in each. I don't need but We can respond it. later. Okay, we'll do that. So anyway, thanks yeah. everybody for hanging out with us, and we'll see you soon. Bye.